Hi, and welcome back. And uh, today we're going to study Revelation chapter 8. In this lesson, we're going to cover uh, a burning mountain cast to the earth. But before we begin, let's open in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would illuminate every passage spoken and that all the words are plain and clear. Uh, don't let us teach anything other than your word today. And we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Okay, so let's begin. Let's open with uh, Revelation chapter 8 and verse 1. Uh, well, before we begin, I, I want to make this statement that Revelation chapters 8 through 11 is the second time that we're going to be going through the tribulation period. The first time was Revelation chapter 6. This time, we're going through the, the entire tribulation period, the second time, and it's going to be through the trumpets. But let's look at verse 1, Revelation 8, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. That's a, an interesting statement, silence in heaven. And you know why? Because the garbage is about to hit the fan. It's going to get really, really bad. And the people are fearing God. They fear God in trouble. The Bible says, therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. So there's silence in heaven. Uh, there's four passages I want to read that uh, describe this. First one is in Zechariah 12, verses 12 through 13. And the Bible says, And the Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion, in the holy land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. God's not done with Jerusalem. God's not done with Israel. The Bible says in verse 13, Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord. Why? For he is raised up out of his holy habitation. He's about ready to bring judgment. About ready to set uh, the world in order. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. The Bible says, But the Lord in it is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silence before him. So the earth is going to be silence. There will be silence in heaven when he's about ready to bring judgment upon the earth. Isaiah 41 verse 1. Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near and let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Because God's going to bring judgment. The judgment of the trumpets. The Bible says in Zephaniah, Zephaniah 1.7. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. Sometimes we see these things that are happening on the earth, and we wonder, Lord, what are you doing? Can't you stop this? Actually, he's getting them ready. He's gathering the whole world together, allowing them to gather themselves for this time of judgment. And there's, this is no accident. What we're seeing today is no accident. And unfortunately, uh, it's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. And uh, now is the, the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So if you're going to get saved, you need to get saved today, this very moment. Trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Believe that he died for your personal sins and that he was dead, buried, and rose again on the third day. Believe that you shall be saved. But now is the time. But right here... We see silence in heaven because of judgment that's about to come. Now, Revelation 8, verse 2. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets in the middle of this seal. Uh, verse 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Now notice this temple in heaven. There's a temple. Uh, this temple has a throne. It has an altar. And I believe that this altar in heaven is where the souls that are martyred are kind of stationed. We're in the cloud with Jesus Christ. We're with, we're, we're with him. We're part of his body. But... This group of uh, people, these groups that's uh, saved during the tribulation are under, under the altar in heaven. And uh, let's look at a little bit about this temple. Uh, Revelation chapter 7 verse 15 says, Therefore are they before the throne of God, the throne's also in the temple, 
and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Okay, so that's what we're seeing right now in the temple. Uh, notice that Moses was given a pattern of this temple to make. Uh, what what we see, what we read about in the in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, is uh, a, a pattern, a pattern what's really what's real in heaven. Uh, look at Hebrews chapter eight verse five. The Bible says, "Who serve unto the example of a shadow of heavenly things." So what Moses was given was a shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for, uh, see, he saith, let me read that again. God, when he was about to make the tabernacle for, see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. So he was given a pattern of what uh, what is real in heaven. Uh, notice this temple, and we will notice this when we get to Revelation 21. This temple will, will be gone when New Jerusalem comes down out of heaven. Um, the Bible says in Revelation 21, verse 22, And I saw no temple, it's gone, therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. So every everything will be part of the body at the end of the millennial reign. But uh, until then... The body of Christ is, or the body of Christ is, are the church age saints, and uh, those that are given white robes are the uh, the people saved during the tribulation period. Now, notice that uh, let's read verse four first of all, Revelation chapter eight, verse four. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints is sended up before God out of the angel's hand. Verse five. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And there we go. So notice that these uh, prayers are considered incense. Incense is considered prayers. Uh, the Bible says in Psalm 141 verse 2, it says, let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. And uh, getting back to what these prayers are, look at Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. Let's see what these uh, prayers and this incense is. It says, and when he opened up the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, the altar in heaven, the souls, these souls are in the altar of heaven. The souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell in the earth? So these souls that are in the temple crying day and night are pleading for vengeance. Remember Jesus said, Vengeance is mine, say the Lord, I will repay. And so... Uh, they are praying for vengeance day and night. And you know what happens? It goes up as incense before the Lord. One of the angels takes the censers full of that incense and throws it to the earth. And you know what that means? That the prayers of the persecuted return as judgments upon this earth. And uh, part of the judgments that will be taking place on the earth during the tribulation period is a result from the people the, wick, uh, the wicked people that had martyred uh, the believers, their prayers will be answered. Uh, this is nothing new. If you look at Genesis chapter 4, verses 25 through 26, we see something similar uh, before the flood of Noah. And the Bible says, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. That's the line of Noah. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And the seed of Cain, that's a whole other topic which we can get into, but not today. Uh, and then there's a reason that he, his seed wasn't chosen. Uh, it's more than just uh, being, well, I, I, that'll be another topic. It's pretty interesting. But nevertheless, Seth was the replacement seed for Abel. And verse 26, And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Why? Why would men be 
calling upon the name of the Lord because things were really happening when the fallen angels came down and started cohabitating with the women, the human women, and giants were born unto them, and then the world was filled with violence, and they were uh, trying to get rid of any any person that uh, has had anything to do with Jehovah God. And uh, they began crying unto the name of the Lord. And their prayers were answered. Their prayers were answered when the flood of Noah came. Now, uh, let's uh, keep reading Je uh, Revelation chapter, where are we? Revelation chapter 8 and verses, well, let's just keep reading a little bit. Verse 6. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. They were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees were, was burnt up, and all green grass was burned up. Notice that. And uh, what we see uh, when this trumpet sounded, that uh, all, all of the vegetation is, is dried up, a third of it, a third of the trees. Uh, the people that love nature, I love nature actually. I love to go to parks and uh, wilderness preserves. I love, I love going anywhere where there's natural beauty, but uh, it will not escape the judgment of God either. And a third of that's going to be burned up during the tribulation period. And look at verse eight. And it says, the second angel sounded and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures, and a third, uh, I'm sorry, and a third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third part of the ships were destroyed. So whatever this mountain is destroys ships and fish and and sea life, and uh, I have some comments on this uh, great great mountain burning and i have some passages i like to read um it could be there's there's some speculation it could be a nuclear bomb i mean that's a possibility i don't know if it's a burning mountain but uh it could be another great possibility is that this mountain is a volcano that erupts because uh we've seen in our recent past when volcanoes erupt some big chunks of land uh shoot up into the sky like a burning mountain uh that could be but whatever this is, it's so powerful, probably larger than anything this world has ever seen. It's so powerful that it destroys a third part of uh, sea life and a third part of the ships that are in the sea. Let's read about this burning mountain, shall we? Let's read uh, Psalm 46, verses 1 through 2. The Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And thank God for that. We're going to be on the right side of this during the tribulation. Therefore, uh, will not we fear? We're not going to fear what's coming. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Uh, this kind of implies that maybe there's uh, this event will have other mountains other than one burning mountain. But the Bible in Revelation mentions this particular mountain, a great mountain burning with fire cast into the sea. Well, it's going to be ca carried into the midst of the sea. Let's look at this. Further, remember in Mark what Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall receive, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. There's the prayers of the saints praying for vengeance. And you know, Jesus was speaking to the Jews during, at this moment, Mark chapter 11, and this will be fulfilled. It's amazing how you can understand the, the Bible when you just read Scripture with Scripture and rightly divide. Jeremiah 51, uh, verse 25. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain. Here's this mountain. Saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth. Uh, one third part. I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks. I will make thee a burnt mountain. There you go. There's your burning mountain. And God's behind it as part of judgment and uh, as part of an answered prayer from the prayers of the, the tribulation saints praying for vengeance upon this earth. Now, let's look at Revelation chapter 8, verse 10. And the third angel sounded, 
And there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the waters, and upon the, fount, uh, and upon the fountains of the waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became worm, Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. The, the water became poison uh, because of this. Uh, let's read a little bit about these falling stars again. I think I mentioned this in a previous lesson a little bit, how there's something about angels and something about stars, how they're connected. And uh, you can't mistake that when you study the Bible and you study it all the way through uh, from cover to cover. You'll see this over and over. And uh, we see these angels bringing judgments. Uh, when this, before we get to the bitter water, let's learn about these angels bringing judgments. Uh, Revelation chapter 6 and verse 13. The Bible says, And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Okay? Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Now, if we, if we trust science, the science that's falsely so called, according to the Apostle Paul, uh, you wouldn't think that this would be possible. But if you study the science according to the Bible, that uh, angels and stars are connected, that maybe stars aren't what science is telling us, uh, you can see the possibility of them falling into the earth. Uh, look at Revelation chapter 12 and verse 4. The Bible says, His tail, Satan's tail, drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. There we go. There's the stars falling to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to, delour, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And we'll study that closer when we get to Revelation 12. But notice that these stars fall from heaven, and they're connected with the devil and their angels. Look at Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. How can a... A star, according to science, have a key to the bottomless pit. But it can if it's uh, the science, according to the Bible, that they're angels. Look at uh, Revelation chapter 8, verse 11. It says, And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood. What, uh, what we see, I think I lost my place here. Oh. Revelation 8, 11. Oh, the waters become poisoned. That's what we see. Let's look at, for this, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 14 through 15. But have walked, speaking of the people during the tribulation period, but have walked after the imagination of their own heart, after Balaam, there's the Antichrist, which their fathers taught them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood. And give them water of gall to drink as a judgment, judgment for following the Antichrist and for martyring people that didn't want to follow the Antichrist and refuse the mark of the beast. And notice that uh, uh, they are given poisoned water to drink. And that's going to be horrible. Horrible. Everything that comes out of the tap water will be poisoned. Anything that they try to get from the streams and rivers and springs will be uh, poisoned waters. Now notice uh, in verse 12, notice it says, A fourth angel sounded, and a third part of the sun was smitten, and a third part of the moon, and a third part of the stars. Why is a third part of the stars smitten? Why are they darkened? Because they come to the earth. They come, and they are the fallen angels that come with the devil, and they come to the earth, and they have assignments that uh, is part of God's judgment upon this earth. It's pretty clear. It's pretty clear. Uh, Pretty understandable and pretty amazing, actually, when you go scripture with scripture. Um, now let's look at Revelation chapter 8, verse 13. This is the last passage. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Whoa, 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 to the inhabitant, inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet and the three angels which are yet to sound. So he's saying, you this this the angels flying through heaven. And he's saying, you know what, this this is really bad, but you haven't seen anything yet. Wait till the last three angels sound. He's warning this angels flying through the heaven. Um, this is another reason why we know that the thought of the church that 
uh, and this present time being part of the tribulation is ridiculous. We don't see angels flying through the heaven. But during the tribulation, that's going to be a common thing. Uh, for that, we see another example of this. Look at Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 7. The Bible says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. So there's many of them flying through heaven, having messages, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. That's not Paul's gospel. Paul even said, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, let him be accursed. So this is not the church age. This is not Paul's message. The, this, these angels are saying, this angel in particular is saying, Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come, because they're in the middle of the tribulation, and all hell is about uh, is breaking loose, and is about to break loose even more. And uh, this angel is warning people, warning people to fear God. Don't fear the Antichrist. Don't fear the, the beast system. Don't take the mark of the beast. And he says, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. We're not seeing that right now. Right now, it's uh, God's ministers, the, the church, the body of Christ is um, bringing people to Christ through, and through the preaching and teaching of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But this gospel is the everlasting gospel, which will preach, be preached to the earth. And this gospel is simply saying, fear God and, uh, and uh, give glory to him, not the Antichrist, because judgment's coming. And there you have it. There's Revelation chapter 8. And uh, it's kind of a quick chapter, kind of a small portion of scripture. But we're going we're gonna to see a lot more as we go through the rest of the chapters. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to bringing in the, uh, the rest of this. And really looking forward to getting through the entire book of Revelation with you. But uh, let's thank God that we, we have this time, that we have this time that we can choose to be part of the body of Christ before these things happen. Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us this portion of scripture. Thank you for helping make it all clear. Just comparing scripture with scripture and the Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit will, will um, guide us through all truth. And he's guiding us through this passage. I thank you for that. Now I pray for your blessing upon this day and we praise you. Of course, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for uh, watching this uh, lesson and I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you.